Okay, uh, good evening everybody. System Chalk here with the 11th part of, or yeah, I'll say 11th. Um, there was a small inter, no, anything but small intermission, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, there's dishwasher going on in the background. I'm hoping that isn't getting picked up too much, uh, or at the very least it isn't very grating. Um, but I was reflecting a little bit on just what I wanted to get done and this is in general not just the um not just the uh the roguelike tutorial which of course i am enjoying doing and i think is worth uh worth putting the time in but um you know in terms of all of the things that i want to get done on top of the sort of impending um finale of the the scenario wow that is loud at least for me um sorry about that um <clears throat> But yeah, the um, I'm just kind of trying to think about how many days I realistically have to get things done. And I think I, I have enough time to be able to finish this tutorial and get a couple of extensions done. I'm certainly not going to try and shoot for the moon and make something that would be, you know, turned into a major release or anything like that or like major release is probably over overselling it but like anything that is more than just you know hey i've got you know the foundation of something that's kind of interesting and you know i will take some of the lessons from this and and use that to to make something separate um but uh i am sort of i'm becoming aware of just how limited uh the time the time is and i do want to make a serious effort to try and do something completely on my own on this. Well, completely on my own and beyond the fact that obviously this has really helped and, and placed a huge foundation for me to build on. Um, so with all of that in mind, uh, even though I've got some white noise in the background, I have wanted to, I, I'm doing this now because I really want to try and maybe get a little bit of work done ahead of time uh, because I believe the last two tutorials are next week's. So if I can maybe get those done on, say, Thursday, um, that would give me a little bit more time on something like the weekend to really try and make an effort on uh, on extensions and such. Now, uh, about the previous video. So in terms of the playlist for this series, uh, I want to just be the um, the entries. But I was thinking a little bit about the fact that Ruff is working right now. And again, obviously, it is silly to have this many things uh, enabled. And I certainly ran into that uh, during the intermission. But, I, you know, just there's just this idea that if there's, you know, a couple of hundred errors when all of the files are open, all I'm really going to do is train myself to ignore them. And even here, right, I still have uh, a number of them, but... I thought, you know, okay, well, here's here's what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to do a, you know, a you like a I don't know a, a Python idiot version of a of a Yule log. Basically, you know, I took recorded the video as I went through. I think there were about fifty different rules uh, or codes or or whatever it was that were um, that had come up. There are some that I deliberately said. So I, I tried as much as I could to say, if it's making a recommendation, follow it. I am not yet at a point where I can sort of make judgments in terms of which ones are appropriate or not. There's definitely some I ran into where I'm like, I'm not really sure this is what I want to go for, which again, makes sense because literally everything is turned on. Um, but there were a few where I just sort of thought the, the return on the time that it would take wasn't really there. So, for instance, um, you know, missing a doc string in a public module, that comes up a lot. I think that's a, a really good thing for me to do and fix. And certainly some of the, you know, the intermediate ones that I replaced really are not great doc strings. Um, but I figure for this, I can do like a proper pass of like, OK, now that everything's in place and now I've, you know, now that I've sort of got some other things that I was interested in, Let's tidy this up. Let's see if I can make doc strings that I, you know, I'm proud of. Because, I mean, eventually on my own, I am going to have to do this sort of stuff. And I might as well take the time on something where it's not super important. Uh, it might take the time to actually build, um, build that, um, get to a point where I'm like, okay, I feel, I, I feel like this is not a chore anymore. 
um, and I have a rough idea about the sort of thing I want to see when I read um, a doc string. And obviously that's only going to come from, from time and practice. So again, it's not, a, not an ideal situation. There's still a lot of errors that have come through, but they're within a sort of small subset of what was there before. And so hopefully I'll be taking advantage of these, um, these problems. Uh, and again, this is my pie. This is rough. There's a few, a few of these going on. Um, hopefully I will be getting a little bit more of the benefit for the final entries in the tutorial. Um, and again, if you, for whatever reason, really want to see, again, some Python um, novices version of a Yule log, um, it's basically, it's, it's a video in the playlist, uh, I think, but I made like an alternative link to it, but it's not part of the overall continuity because I think that one is a particularly unedified, well, not unedified, I mean, again, if you want to watch it, you can, but like it's, it's not, um, not quite the same as going through the tutorial. Um, although I do like the way it presents, you know, the, the arguments, like there are some that I notice can point to peps and others don't. So those are eventually going to be the foundations of me sitting down and really uh, coming to terms with some of the things that are, are in, the, um, uh, in the project and, and changed. So we're on to part 11, delving into the dungeon. Our game isn't much of a dungeon crawler if there's only one floor to our dungeon. In this chapter, we will allow the player to go down a level and we'll put very base, uh, a very basic leveling system in place to make the dive all the more rewarding. Before diving into the code for this section, let's add the color we'll need for this chapter for when the player descends down a level in the dungeon. Open up color.py and add this line. So after status effect applied, we do descend. What am I doing? Okay. Sorry, there's something in my eye. All right, there we go. Uh, we'll use this color later on when adding a message to the message log that the player went down one floor. We'll also need a new tile type to represent the downward stairs of the dungeon. Typically, roguelikes represent this with the greater than uh, character. We'll do the same. Uh, add the following to tiletypes.py. All right, so with wall, downstairs, new tile, walkable, true, transparent, true, dark, or says the character. The hell was that? Just be two parentheses, I think. Nope. <laughs> there we go. Light. So this is again translating the character that we want. Five. 80, 50, just taking the tutorial's word for it in terms of the colors. Uh, to, keep, uh, to keep track of where our downward stairs are located on the map, we can add a new variable in uh, out in it an out in it function in the game map class. Actually, there is one thing I'm gonna try really quick. So if I just do type ignore here, Hmm. Yeah, I kind of wish I knew the rule that was being uh, being ignored here because it didn't seem to give an alert. Anyways. Uh, to keep track of the, where the downward stairs are located on the map, we can add a new variable uh, in out an hour init function in the game map class. Uh, the variable needs some sort of default, so to start we can set that to be 0, 0 by default. 
add the following line to game map dot pi. Okay, so after init got self explored self downstairs location equals zero zero. Uh, of course, zero, 00 won't be the actual location of the stairs. In order to actually place the downstairs stairs, we'll need to edit our procedural dungeon generator to place the stairs at the proper place. We'll keep things simple and just place the stairs in the last room that our algorithm generates. By keeping track of the center coordinates of the last room we created, modify generate dun the generate dungeon function in procgen.py. Okay, so after the list of rooms, there of last room, again, initializing to zero. Okay. Something like this. Right, okay, this is the one that's going to complain about my massive... I, I'm never going to make a cryptocurrency with this kind of dungeon. Um, so I'm looking for the tunnel between... There we go. Uh, but that can't be right because place entities is after digging out. Hmm. Sorry, I need a minute to think about what this will do. Okay, so we've initialized the center of the last room, zero, zero. So we've got four underscore in range max rooms, and then we've got everything that we're working with down to here. Um, throw it away if it intersects, dig out the inner area. I mean, it, okay, so to my mind, it does not, it doesn't hurt anything to place the entities in the room. The order doesn't change that. So we still check to see if it's the first room where the player starts. So in this case, you know, we don't worry too much about that. Um, although I'm maybe not so sure. I mean, we probably want this out of the conditional. Um, because the player's last room. So if we... I can't imagine a situation where we would have a two-room dungeon, but presumably that is a, a potential outcome. Um, so... But yeah, so I'm indifferent about the place entities, but I do want... Like, I can't imagine that I would have... Um, I can't imagine I would have moved that for any reason. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. But I guess the problem here... Okay, so this this is where I get a little weirded out now. So, okay, so we say center of the last room, new room center. Um... Dungeon tile, center of last room, tile types downstairs, uh, dungeon downstairs location, center of last room. Oh, no, 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 this is still fine. Okay, sorry, I was... Um so basically the what what I was thinking was going on here I'm sorry I'm, I really probably should have just gone to bed instead of um, started doing this so what I was thinking about is that it's like wait a minute aren't I just putting a set of stairs in every single room and sort of I am like I'm sure if we were to slow this thing down we would see um, you know we would see sort of the the room or the downstairs sort of move through but it seems here that it's it's just defining the the tiles here in dungeon dot tiles then it's assigning the downstairs location and that downstairs location is moving each time so i think this should be fine Whichever room generated last, we take its center and set the downstairs location equal to those coordinates. We also replace whatever tile type with downstairs so the player can clearly see that location. Okay, I'm feeling a little less confident about that. To hold information about the maps, including the size, the room variable, size and maximum number, along with the floor that the current player is currently on, we can add a class to hold these variables as well as generate new maps when the time comes. Open up the gamemap.py and add the following class. I hope this got rid of that white space it was complaining about. Game world holds the settings for the game map and, and generates new maps when moving down the stairs. What don't you like about this? Right. I need to find how to change that setting. Now it's going to say it's one one line should be one line. And now it's going to complain about Self. So again, I think the um, star or splat or whatever is intended to make all of these keywords. Engine, engine, map width is an int, map height is an int, max rooms is an int, room min size is an int. Room max size is an int. Max monsters per room is an int. Max items per room is an int. Current floor is an int and is initialized to zero. And it's going to yell at me if I don't add a comma. Engine is engine map width uh. 
I think it's going to complain about a type annotation for self. Since when? Now, the other fun one about this is I believe it's going to complain if I say is a game world. The first line of a doc string should be in imperative mood. I think initialize is, but... What don't you like now? One blank line required after the... Okay. Now generate floor. To none. Um, proc gen. Oh, this is interesting. Import generate dungeon. I'm curious um, why this is done in here as opposed to the top. Self current floor plus equals one engine map you guessed wrong. Okay, room max size, room Items, self, max, item. The generate floor method will create a uh, create the new map each time we go down a floor using the variables that game world stores. In this tutorial, we won't program in the ability to go back up a floor after going down one, but you could perhaps modify game world to hold the previous maps in order to utilize the new. Okay, it's a little bit of a shame that um, it doesn't explain why. So I understand that this can be done. I'm just not sure what the benefit is. Um, well, okay, so I can think about, I guess the thing that is different is we are, 
Nope, that's actually that's still not different. Um, sorry. That's the Duolingo owl demanding my sacrifice. We're good. Um, yeah, so this really isn't any different from us taking, you know, engine or entity. So it would have been nice to maybe understand why we would do do it this way, but uh, I'm not going to spend too much time thinking on it. Um, all right, in order to utilize the new game world class, we will need to add it to the engine like this. Okay, so from type checking, from game map, game world. Pretty simple. To utilize the game world class attribute, edit, excuse me, uh, set up game.py like this. Okay, after entity factory from game map import game world. I think it's going to complain about that. We'll see how it looks at the end of the, the edits. Okay, after engine, we don't do generate dungeon, we do engine game world, game world, gen just to give us a little something to think about. <laughs> Um, then engine game world generate floor. Okay, still isn't like that. Yeah, did complain about it. Okay. Uh, now, instead of calling generate dungeon uh, directly, we create a new game world and allow it to call its generate floor method. While this doesn't change anything for the first floor that's created, it will allow us to more easily create new floors on the fly. In order to actually take the stairs, we'll need to add an action and a way for the player to trigger it. Adding the action is pretty simple. Add the following to actions.py. Okay, after the wait action, class takes stairs action, def perform. If entity x, elf entity y. So this is the same thing that we do to pick up a... Actually, I kind of wonder here. This is probably not the best way for me to think about classes, but like we do have... We do have a number of actions that we take that effectively check um, whether we're in the right spot. So I don't know if this would be a case where you want to create another um, you know, another class in terms of, um, I don't know, like targeted action or, or um, location-based action, like basically one that has this, um, has this check inside of it. I, I don't think it needs like, again, you can kind of, you can go crazy um, slicing and dicing this all all in its own way, but it does sort of feel like there is a group of, of things that we do that, um, that do this check pretty frequently. Um, 
So I don't know if that would just be, you know, adding a method. I don't know if that would be adding um, a new class or something like that, or the combination of the two, but just one of those cases that sort of feels like it's maybe been repeated a couple of times, which makes me think that maybe that's a, a time to uh, to add something. So self engine game map downstairs location engine game world generate floor self engine message log message you descend the staircase else raise exception I think this is going to complain about the text inside yeah avoid specifying long messages so not this is a little annoying that I'm doing this but this is how Right, it's the the class is missing at the um, you're joking me. Oh. Um, all right. To call this action, the player should be able to press the greater than key. This can be accomplished by adding this to input handlers. Not base, I'm looking for main game. Okay, so EV key down, we have key, fire, event.mod. After self player, if key goals t cod and key sim period. So I'm just anticipating the uh, warning it would give me and modifier and mod event. Oh, wait a minute. There was, um, <sighs> right. There was a, um, we ran into this before with the modifiers and I'm trying to remember, I think it was with the message log. So I'm just looking because there was something about the or was it in input handlers? Okay, adjust. I remember this being a thing. Oh wait, it was in the targeting. Um, Okay, event modifier. Actually, probably what should have triggered, um, 
I think here's the thing that probably could have uh, alerted me to the uh, to the difference. The um, so notice here that it's got event k period, whereas here it's got k mod. So that should have been sort of a signal to me that these things were were different. But anyways, doesn't matter. Um, I'll shift or t cod. Okay, this is good. This seems to expect an intended block after an if statement. Okay, it was just late to update that. Okay, seems like we're good. However, it's saying that I'm missing positional arguments for handle action. Now I had this happen once before. Okay, hang on. The action's in action. Action as an entity. Yeah, I've had this happen. I thought I dealt with all of this stuff. Um, okay, let's deal with this one at a time. This doesn't like the fact that there is no return. Okay, that seems to have dealt with everything. Can I just delete this and make it happy? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, all right, as long as it's happy. Uh, modifier tells us the player is holding a key like Control, Alt, or Shift. In this case, we're checking if the user is holding Shift while pressing the period key, which gives us the greater than symbol. With that, the player can now descend the staircase to the next floor of the dungeon. Let's see if it works. Actually, while I'm doing that, let's also just see if there's 92 errors. So I'm not expecting miracles here. Maybe if we divide this by the... Oops, but I should basically see... Um... Actually, you know what? I'm going to try something here. Um... What if we just get rid of this and wait until it complains to add it? Again, I'm trying to take this stuff seriously. <laughs> okay. Let's see if it blows up. I think that's an old error, but let me just try this again. Okay, yeah, this is fine. So play a new game. We've got a orc here. Okay.
Okay, so obviously this is the objective, but I do, just because I did uh, changes that weren't just related to the tutorial here, and because I like playing games, um, I'm going to see if the... I'm just going to run through and see if we get any warnings or other... Oh, actually, you know what? There is one thing that I haven't tried in the... There's something that I haven't tried in the, um, yeah, it's the mouse overs. <laughs> Didn't mean to just go plowing through the troll there, but didn't didn't kill us yet. I think we're done the dungeon, so the moment of truth, and if this doesn't work properly, I'm not going to do a full level again. Magic! And we have continuity with our inventory. That's actually kind of cool. Um, this is definitely one of the cases where, you know, I follow the tutorial and every step seems quite simple. Um, but all of those little st simple steps actually lead to a, a fairly fun little moment where you get used to running around the same environment over and over again. And you're like, hey, I've got a brand new map. That's actually kind of neat. So um, good job, tutorial. Uh, one little touch that we can add before moving to the next section. Oh, I actually didn't check to see what the text said. Sorry, this, I'm not going to do the full level. I'm just going to run to find the floor. Um, I didn't check the text. It's an empty place. Okay. Maybe I will clear it. I'm not intentionally trying to clear it. That would have been upsetting if I lost the character. <laughs> All right. This isn't good. I mean, can't fault the map generator for giving oh that's an interesting little problem um put the remains of an orc over the exit that's gonna be okay yes yeah, so you descend the staircase sorry about the time that that took but we actually learned something out of that um so that might be something i want to think about in terms of um rendering the staircase uh over the corpse okay um one little touch we can add before moving on to the next section is adding the way to see which floor the player is on. It's simple enough, we'll use the current floor in game world to know which floor we're on and we'll modify our render function, uh, function uh, render functions.py file to add a method that prints this information out to the UI. Add this function to render functions.py. Okay, in addition to type checking, we're adding, we're not adding tuple. 
Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, after render bar, we will add def render dungeon level console console. Returns none. That's kind of neat that that actually didn't allow me to go to the next line until the um, colon. Well, the player is currently on at the given location. The render dungeon level function is fairly straightforward. Given a set of XY coordinates as a tuple, it prints to the console which dungeon level was passed to the function. To call this function, we can edit the engine's render function like so. All right, didn't like that. Um, oh, of course, because... Sorry, like I said, should have gone to bed instead of started another uh, another video. Okay. Uh, to call this function, we can edit the... Maybe we'll just take a minute here, make sure we didn't add anything unsavory to render. Yep. Uh, to call this function, we can edit the engine's render function like so. Engine. All right, this is nice to see. Render bar is now render functions dot render bar. Um, the idea of making this, oh, hang on. Yeah, I need to add more stuff anyway. Um, the idea of making this like fully match up line for line doesn't really work anymore anyway. Unforgivable. Um, just because I've already changed so much to satisfy uh, the warnings here. Still, it's not a bad habit to get into, um, just to try and make sure that if I, if just give myself a fighting chance in terms of finding the dumb things that I do. Uh, done level. And location, and I don't need an engine. Presumably it's going to complain about a magic number. No. Okay, and then... I think this is the old one that we had anyways. Render names at mouse location console. Yeah, so I probably could have just moved that one down. Um. Okay. Now that we're importing render functions instead of importing the functions it contains, um, sorry, 
the 740 the function it contains after a, uh, a while it makes sense to just import the entire module rather than a few functions here and there otherwise the file can get a bit difficult to read the call to render dungeon level shouldn't be anything too surprising we use self game world current floor as our dungeon level and the location of the printed string is below the health bar feel free to move this somewhere else if you like Try going down a few levels and make sure everything works as expected. If so, congratulations, your dungeon now has multiple levels. Um, okay. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I don't think it's bad to spend time. Aha! Alright, didn't like dungeon level. That would be because it's not a names at mouse location. There we go. Well, hello and welcome, adventurer, to yet another dungeon. We are on dungeon level one. I was going to say, that doesn't look like a potion, but it's just a little thing on my monitor. Obviously, you wouldn't see that unless by some fantastic coincidence you have the exact same bit of dust or whatever that is. But, ooh. There are no targets in the radius, you say. There we go. Okay, number two is working. I landed on top of an orc here, which is not great, but... Actually, I should... Next time I do that, I should see if the wait action winds up counting as a... Um, an attack or not. I'm just going to try one more level. I mean, if it goes up by one... Presumably, it will go up by one again. But it did say a couple of levels, so. <laughs> uh, I'm not surviving this. A lot of fireballs. That's going to be weird if the stairs were in that first room. No, there's no way they could be. Oh, sorry, I didn't. There's still more. Okay, there we go. Got unfinished business with that troll. All right, that seems good enough to me. Go out with a bang. I don't... 
Oh. Yeah, I should probably figure out a little bit of... All right. That's fine. I will get <laughs> sucked into playing this forever. Uh, da, 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 da. We... Yes, we're fine. Um, speaking of levels, many roguelikes, not all, feature some sort of level-up system where your character gains experience and gets stronger by, fight, uh, gets stronger by fighting monsters. The rest of this chapter will be spent implementing one such system. In order to allow the rogue to level up, we need to modify the actors in two ways. The player needs to gain experience points, keeping track of the XP gained thus far, and know when it's time to level up. The enemies need to give experience points when they are defeated. There are several calculations we could use to compute how much XP a player needs to level up, or theoretically, you could just hard code the values. Ours will be fairly simple. We'll start with a base number and add the product of our player's current level and some other number, which will make it so that each level up requires more XP than the last. For this tutorial, the base will be 200 and the factor will be 150. So going up to level 2 will take 350 XP, level 3 will take 500, and so on. We can accomplish both of these goals by adding one component, level. The level component will hold all of the information that we need to accomplish these goals. Create a file called level.py in the components directory and put the following contents in it. Sorry, that was level, right? Yeah. Okay. Gonna yell that I didn't give it a doc string. current this one's always a little tedious isn't quite the word i'm looking for but um it's very it's very standard you know i typed these things before now i'm going to type them again um and then i inevitably make oh wait no no commas here because these aren't parameters um But yeah, sorry, I should at least read them out just so it's not complete silence. Experience to next level. Self returns an int. Return self level up base plus current level times self dot level up. Factor. Property. Experience to next level. If the current XP is greater than the experience to next level, um, in that case, it's just a true. Um, I 
yes. Entity. Uh, why are you mad? Um, okay, we've got the properties def add xp, self of xp int none, if xp zero, or self level up base zero, return self current xp right so if basically if you can't if you can't do anything with the x or if you can't level up or you can't do anything with it don't waste time uh self current xp add the xp engine message log add message you gain xp points Self requires level up. Self engine message log. Advance to level. Self current level plus one. Now this will get sorted when I hit save. Uh, why are you mad now? Increase level. This is interesting. So when you add the XP, it does not actually level up. Hmm. So it's we've got an add XP here that says that you level up, but it doesn't actually perform the level up. Curious. Increase the player's level. Okay, there's where the... <sighs> Why? I'm still trying to make sense of this. I think... So I have... I, I think this is probably just a... Uh, oh, sorry, I should also... Um, I know a proper doc string, I think it should be also saying like what amount is and what its default is and things like that, but I just want to stop as much as I can. I want to stop this from complaining. Um, okay, so I think like I'm sort of getting the logic uh, here, but I suppose the question I would ask is that if you were to sit down and say, you know, at what point does the player's level increase? It would seem to me the obvious answer to that is um, you know, it would be here, right? We don't say that we've leveled up when we have not in fact done anything to level up. Um, so it seems that there's going to be another sort of set of things that happen based on um, based on the or sorry based on um, some uh, thing try I'm, I'm stumbling over myself again it seems that there are going to be a few more steps that we weren't aware of but I guess the thing I need to think about here is that it's like okay so we're increasing max HP 
so what is it about HP that makes it natural to level up, to, to increase the level? That is the part where I'm a little unsure. Um, I, I think maybe also to... Um, perhaps the the way I think of this would be like when you level up, there are a number of things that happen to you, right? Like your level goes up, you get your new max uh, experience that you require. You uh, maybe that's where you get your extra HP and your power and such. Um, so again, like it's this is all going to get handled. Um, okay, now I really am confused. <laughs> Increase, but or maybe so. Maybe you make a choice in terms of max HP, of power, or defense. That's probably what's happening here. Stop for the love of God. So yeah, sorry about the um sorry about the misunderstanding there. I um I kind of get now that there's you're not going to have all these things happen and that's why you need to separate them. Okay, let's go over what was added. Um, we added the init and, oh yeah, it's gonna complain about, or did I say initially set up the leveling system, right? Um, our values in our init function break down like this. Current level, the current level of the entity defaults to one. Current XP, the entity's current experience points level up base. The base number we decide for leveling up. We'll set this to 200 when creating the player level up factor. The number to multiply against the entity's current level, XP given when the entity dies, this is how much XP the player will gain. Uh, adding the property experience next level, this represents how much experience the player needs until hitting the next level. The formula is explained above. Again, feel free to tweak this formula in any way you see fit. Uh, requires level up. We'll use this property to determine if the player needs to level up or not. If the current XP is higher than the experience to next level property when the player levels up, if not, nothing happens. Add XP. This method acts as experience points for the entity's XP pool, as the name implies. If the value is zero, we just return if there's nothing to do, uh, as there's nothing to do. Notice that we also return the level up base to, uh, if the level up base is set to zero. Why? In this tutorial, the enemies don't gain XP, so we'll set their level up base to zero so that there's no way they could ever gain experience. Perhaps in your game, mon uh, game monsters will gain XP, and you'll want to adjust this, but that's left up to you. The rest of the method adds the XP, adds a message to the message log, and if the entity levels up, posts another message. So increase level self, none, um, put it here. This method adds plus one to the current level while decreasing the current XP by the experience to next level. We do this because if we didn't, it would always just take the level up factor amount to level up, which isn't, isn't what we want. If you wanted to keep track of the player's cumulative XP through the playthrough, you could skip decrementing current XP and instead add, uh, in, sorry, and instead adjust the experience to next level formula accordingly. 
Lastly, the functions increase max HP, increase power, and increase defense all do basically the same thing. They raise one of the entity's attributes, add a message to the message log, and then call increase level. To use this component, we will need to add it to our actor class. Make the following changes to the file entity.py. from component level import level we are class actor level is level Dot level equals level, level parent equals self. We will also modify our entities in the entity factories.py now. From components dot level import level. And then level equal up bait two hundred think we're good. Sorry, just taking the time here to make sure. There were a couple um, new ones that I, I missed, so. Okay, as mentioned, the level up base for the player is set to 200, orcs give 35, trolls give 100 since they're stronger. These values are completely arbitrary, so feel free to adjust them in any way you see fit. When an enemy dies, we need to give the player XP. This is as simple as adding one line to the fighter component, so open up fighter.py to add this. So fighter base component die. So after the message log, self engine player level add XP self parent level XP given. Now the player will gain XP for defeating enemies. While the player does gain XP now, notice that we haven't actually called the functions that increase the player's stats and the player levels up. This is what my complaint was. We'll need a new interface to do this. The way it will work is that as soon as the player gets enough experience to level up, we'll display a message to the player, giving the player three choices on what stat to increase. When chosen, the appropriate function will be called and the message will close. Let's create a new event handler called level up event handler, which will do just that. Create the following class in input handlers.py, which we already opened. After the ask user event handler. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put this back after the. Hey, I learned something new. Uh, this should make it easier. Uh, ask user. Class level up event handler ask user event handler title level up 
on render self console tcod console to none up screen super on render so we're calling the ask user event handler on render giving it our console if self engine player x 30 okay i think it's 40 if uh, self engine play is this is equal 30 else zero I know it's going to complain about the magic values but I believe that still works x plus 1, y equals 1. Congratulations. You level up. Console print x equals x plus 1 equals 2 string select an attribute to increase y equals 4 string f constitution plus 20 P from self engine this doesn't quite make sense to me so we're saying plus 20 HP from I guess it, I've never quite seen the phrasing this way. I'm okay with it. Um, the one thing, again, this is, we talked about this before and I don't want to uh, harp on it too much, but obviously this is saying 20 HP. And technically if we were to change the 20, we would also need to remember to change it uh, here as well. But I'm not going to, I'm going to mention it and move on. <laughs> Prints x equals x plus one, y equals five, string equals f, b. And of course, presumably it's going to ask us to hit a, b, or c, and then again, if those keys change, um, we'd need to change it in a second place too.
That's definitely wrong to tell me that's not matched. I think it's because we're splitting the string over. More than one line. Console print x equals x plus one, y equals six, string fc utility plus one defense from self engine player fighter defense. Okay, def ev key down self events t cod events key down to optional nope or none player Yeah, I'll live with that for now. Key event sim index equals key minus t cod event dot key sim dot a. If zero less than or equal to index less than or equal to two. So I think what's happening here is um, so actually this this would be this will be an interesting test to see whether or not event ka and key sim a have the same thing. So I think what's happening here is sorry. I think if you do the um ord actually we can probably test that now. Uh, or a okay, so we get ninety seven or b ninety eight. Um, so I think I'm kind of getting something similar to that here. So this is the key that the players pressed down. We're saying, okay, so some key's been pressed. How far away from a is it? Is kind of the way of thinking about it, and if the value is B or C, which are the ones written here, then it's gonna process them. And if it's something greater than that, that means that we hit a button that's uh, somewhat further than C. Uh, and I'm assuming, I should have checked this too. Uh, Python. So I'm just curious if I were to do one, for instance, Oh, that's 49. That's interesting. Well, no, that's fine because it's still, it's between uh, one and two, so it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. So basically this is just a fancy way of doing A, B, and, a, B, and C. If index is zero. I mean, really, this feels like we could do the matching in this case. Um, I don't know if the index is that much clearer, um, but I'm I'm gonna again I'm gonna follow the tutorial regardless. Uh, level increase max HP. Elif x one player level increase power else player level events else self engine message log add match invalid entry 
color invalid. Turn none. Okay, so um, again, I mention it once and then move on. Um, obviously, we've got multiple places now where we need to change things. So if we don't want A, B, and C, if we want to change the values, um, we're going to have to change things in, in more than one place uh, as a result of this. But it's a small and simple project, so I don't think this is like, I'm not going to get up in arms over the, the issue. Return super dot ev key down event. Okay. And def ev mouse button down self event tcod event dot mouse button down. Um, action or handler or none. Don't allow the player to click the menu like normal. Or none. Okay, the idea here is very similar to inventory. The idea here is very similar to inventory event handler. It inherits from the same ask user event handler class, but instead of having a variable number of options, it's set to three, one for each of the primary attributes. Furthermore, there is no way to exit the menu without selecting something. The user must level up before continuing. Notice we had to override EV mouse button to prevent clicks from closing the menu. Using level up event handler is actually quite simple. Uh, we can check when the player levels uh, requires a level up at the same time that we check if the player is still alive. Edit the handle events method of event handler like this. There's still something a little funny to me about checking the level up. Like, it just feels a little more natural to me to check the level up when the character gets experience. Um, but, you know, I... I mean, this is also me thinking to like sort of with the step immediately in front of it. me. It may just be that, you know, there may be other things down the road um, that add experience or something along those lines. So I'm probably making a bigger deal of it than is necessary. And there is actually this is a more standard way of, of doing it. It's just one of these things that's kind of been really getting me in the back, <laughs> back of my mind uh, this whole time. Uh, okay, so in handle events, which I don't think we've opened yet. Am I? Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm in it. So after the game over event handler here. Else if so. This is why I say elif sounds very stupid, but it's actually, if I say stuff aloud, I tend to write it. So um, engine player level requires level up. Turn level up event handler self dot engine. Now, when the player gains the necessary number of experience points, the player will have a chance to level up. Let's see this in action. But first, a quick check through the log. We're definitely adding more that are not getting fixed here just because every time it complains about a magic number, but um, I'm really just more interested in catching the ones that I can easily handle. All right, no errors yet. <laughs> uh, That's an exciting way to start.
Jesus Christ. <laughs> Congratulations, you level up. Select an attribute to increase. Agility. <laughs> I cannot take any more hits like this. Well, at least we got to see that the level up works pretty quick. My god. Okay, so that lightning scroll is going to help me for the future trolls that I get. In this case, the real motivation for checking out, yikes, um, all the floors are just to get that health. Lightning's a nice pickup, mind you. Zap. So the reason I'm going all the way for agility is obviously there's no uh, system yet where the enemies um, uh, the enemies like increase their damage so if i do enough um like if i give myself enough defense then effectively i just shrug off their attacks and then of course from there it's like okay well doesn't the game get a little bit boring if i you know if i'm just busy whacking away at oh yeah so here we go we're already at that point tax a player no damage obviously we're not there with trolls yet but this is a this is a pretty straightforward way to guarantee myself a win every time. Mind you, <laughs> let's have some fun with this. <laughs> let's just get chased by a mob of orcs for as long as we can. Let us see how the path pathfinding works. This is kind of cute. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So it looks like the... Um... Ah, okay. So... Oh, man, the troll uh, can't, can't get me either. Uh, so here we would keep increasing strength so that we can just plow through the enemies pretty fast. I'm not going to spend like forever doing this, but I do want to see if I can run through this pretty fast. But yeah, it looked like there was a um, an item where the exit was. So clearly here, what we want is experience, not new levels. I'm out of inventory space, so health potion makes a lot of sense too. In fact, at this point, we should drop all the health potions.
oops, and I hit, well, I guess I saved the game anyway, but um, we're just going to continue on from that one because I want to see whether or not I can um, get a super-powered uh, hero. Before finishing the chapter, there's one last thing we can do to improve the user experience. Add a character information screen, which displays the player's stats and current experience. It's actually quite simple. Add the following class to input handlers.py. Okay, after the ask user event handler, I am so, so happy that I am aware of this. Class, character, screen, event, handler, ask user, event, handler, title, character, information, def on render, uh, self, console, tcod, console. Lens self title. I'm assuming this is so that it can be centered. So we'll draw frame x equals x, y equals y, width equals width, height equals seven, title equals self dot title, clear equals true, fg. Five to five to five background zero zero zero. Console dot print x equals x oop, plus one y equals y plus one string equals f level self engine player level current level doesn't like the length i think that's lies and flim flam oh hello That was scary. Um, this actually makes a lot of these um, mysterious MyPy um, errors make sense here. There's stuff that's getting messed around when I save, so I should be a little less zealous uh, in terms of saving. Console print x equals x plus 1 y equals y plus 2 string f xp self engine player full current xp print equals x plus 1, y equals y plus 3, string f xp for next level, player level. So we put a space between this one. Print uh, x equals x plus 1, y equals y plus 4, ring equals f, attack, self, engine, 
air fighter power x equals x plus one y equals y plus ah string f defense it makes me sad every time i have to spell it that way Engine, player, fighter, defense, right. You get a new line. You get a comma. Then you get a new line. OK. Similar to level up event handler, character screen event handler shows information in a window, but there's no real choices to be made here. Any input will simply close the screen. To open the screen, we'll have the uh, player pl press the C key, add the following to main game event handler. So after drop, LF key, Cod event key chord event key sim dot c return character screen event handler self dot engine that's it for this chapter all right well before we do that um we're going to do two checks through the problems this time we're going to go over the individual files Okay, these seem to be fine. Okay, this time we're going to continue. And if I press C, so I'm level four, seven sixty-five, eight. Oh, we're almost on the next level. Oh, what am I doing? Drop. Okay. Many, many health potions. Um, let's see if we can get another level before we leave this level. No. I'll do at most two levels on this, probably just the one, but okay. One, two, three. Okay, I would need three more levels before we one hit trolls. No longer fear two to two troll rooms. This is this is definitely the type of roguelike I like. No no challenge. I get to pretend that I'm very very good at games. And uh, just kill a vast assortment of. Um, fantasy procedurally generated fantasy creatures not even well the level procedurally generated but okay
So, I mean, I, one thing I should clarify too, like it is kind of fun to tool around this still. I'm very easily amused. Um, but one thing I'm finding valuable is uh, I do tend to, like obviously I hit a lot of stray buttons. So this is also kind of instructive for me to see if I'm rushing through, which is already a bad sign. Presumably one does not grow tired of the game and just kind of try to bang through it like I am right now. Um, it's just a nice little reminder. Like, I, I think I have a good idea about how the game works, right? So I, this is why I've chosen to go defense first, because this means that I will have a theoretically infinite um, stream of um, of XP as long as I'm patient enough. But um, I uh, just because I figured out the game doesn't necessarily mean that I interface with it the way that I intend. So there's been a lot of cases where I just run past a an enemy or I run into a troll. Now that's just because I'm like hammering down the button. That's on me. Um, but then there are those cases where I try to go down the stairs. And I don't always go down the stairs. I sometimes um, I sometimes uh, get the selection um, button instead. So those are just little things I like to keep in the back of my head um, as possible things to change. So if I find that there are a couple of commonly used keys that are close to each other, is there a way that I can make that a little less painful to, to work with? Again, I'm still still thinking about some of the different things that we can try to do. Uh, I'm actually also kind of curious what happens if the dungeon level gets really, really big. Like not, I'm not trying to say some sort of overflow or something like that, but what happens if it gets big enough um, that the that it goes into the um, the message log? Uh, character information, character level seven, 305 XP, needs 1250 for the next turn. So that's a lot of trolls. Uh, our current attack value is nine. Our current defense value is four. And here, oops. here's what we've done. A couple invalid entries. I don't know if this was rogue, but I seem to remember hearing that there were games which would, like, if you wanted a printout of what you did, it would provide it. Might actually be kind of neat if we could do something with the message history. Like printing it out is one thing, um, but maybe if there's something, I'm a bit of, like I've I've said this before, but like I'm a bit of a sucker when it comes to like data stuff. I, it's just generally how I think, and this is probably just a function of my you know my background, my uh, my education and such. I just find it's a useful way of sort of thinking about things. Um, and it's it's not, you never want it to be like the one true faith. That's that's not what I'm, I'm trying to say here, but it's just, if there is a, if there's a problem that I'm dealing with, if there's something that I'm looking at, generally I will try to, you know, say, okay, well, what, what numbers do I have to work with here? Is there something that I can use to sort of put some structure on this problem? Um, and, you know, in my job, I don't always have that, you know, I'm, I'm certainly comfortable enough working, you know, in the messy, messy world of, um, you know, qualitative uh, evaluations, but it's just one where I tend to be like, okay, you know, we, we have a, we have a common set of things that we can work with in here. Um, and so when there is stuff like um, civilization, right? So at the end of civilization, It'll give you a number and it will tell you, you know, are you Dan Quayle, you know, or are you Augustus Caesar? Um, you know, or, um, you know, there are, are like, let's say a city builder or something like that. You get to see, you know, how much do people like you? You know, what's the, what does the budget look like? I mean, sometimes these things will be game mechanics too, right? So the budget's probably going to be something that you, you are uh, quite aware of because, that will determine the success of your your city. But there are uh, a lot of games where they'll just give you information about what you have um, for the just the sheer joy of seeing just a representation of what you got up to. So 
you know, a log is one thing, and I think that's um, that's kind of neat on its own. Um, but on the other hand, like if I was thinking of exp um, extensions, like is there a way that I can take the information that's in the log right now and condense that in a way that is sort of fun to interact with? Um, and I mean, this is effective. All that I'm really describing here is the the problem of data visualization for people, right? Half of the time, it's just some number, an aggregate usually, and someone just finds a really clever way of representing it in in such a way that people, you know, are delighted in a way that they wouldn't normally be, um, you know, by by the information. And hopefully, it's sort of serving uh, some larger purpose. So. In any case, I don't want to. I probably shouldn't be uh, finishing this uh, this off by by talking about um, ways to extend the history log. But um, part of this was to just sort of give a bit of an account in terms of where ideas come from, and uh, that was what I thought when I saw that log. Sorry. Oh. I um I am sleepy. That's it for this chapter. We've added the ability to go down floors and to level up. While the player can now progress, the environment itself doesn't. Items that spawn on each floor are always the same, and the enemies don't get tougher as we go down floors. The next part will address that. If you want to see the code so far in its entirety, click here. Definitely we don't need to worry about that, but I am going to go step by step and see. Um, I'm going to do one last check on the files to make sure that we have everything where we can. Okay, doc strings, methods, yep, yeah, it's fine. Uh, we are now on color. Should probably just use the one that it points me to, but so color doesn't like the missing doc string, but otherwise we're fine. Uh, main doc strings prints don't catch a blind exception input handlers doc strings asserts um, events we talked about in the intermission but um, yeah I mean there's a lot in oh EV key down is too complex that's a new one Uh, checks for functions with a high McCabe complexity. The McCabe complexity of a function is a measure of the complexity of the control flow graph of the function. It is calculated by adding one to the number of decision points in the function. A decision point is a place in the code where the program has a choice of two or more paths to follow. Um, yep. Yeah. That's that's life there. Too many return statements. Uh, checks for functions and methods with too many return statements. By default, this rule allows up to six return statements as configured by the uh, lint pylint max returns. Functions or methods with many return statements are harder to understand and maintain and often indicate uh, are often indicative of complex logic. Um, yeah, I mean, fair enough, but. <laughs> this is, again, why I like the big broad. Um, uh, the big broad setting, because I wouldn't wouldn't have known like. I was not aware that there was a thing called McCabe complexity. So if I don't have it on, I don't get to learn about them. I can always turn them off later when I feel more confident. Okay, procgen.py, but I'm on game map. Okay, doesn't like random numbers, magic values. Yeah, we're fine. A map doesn't like the doc strings, but we're fine. Engine doc strings, we're fine. Entity doc strings. Uh, render function doc strings. Entity again doc strings. 
level doc strings, tile types, doc strings, setup. Um, doesn't like the pickle, doesn't like the assert. Doc strings don't catch blind exceptions. We're good. Okay, so completed part 12. Sorry, part 11. So this time we're going to commit and say, oh, got to add everything. Um, this time we're going to commit and sync uh, because that is it for this week. So uh, like I said, the plan here is to actually try and get a head start. I mean, technically I've kind of got a head start already, but um, technically uh, the, the aim here is to try and get, I believe the last week for, um, well, okay, sorry, it isn't the last week, but yeah, the next step is gonna be the last two, uh, part 12 and 13. So the hope here is that I'm actually gonna do that uh, later this week. And that's just so I can do a couple of things. One, um, to try and clean up as much as I can the stuff that I said this would be good to do, but maybe I don't want to make it um, my number one priority. But also I do want to give myself a bit of a chance to try and just sort of swim around and, and see if there's any interesting ideas I can implement. So there's a couple of obvious ones in terms of, you know, maybe add stairs going up. I believe that was in the original Rogue. Um, so that would be kind of a neat one, trying to maybe have some ultimate objective, uh, say. But yeah, basically, like, try and sit down and, you know, like I said, one of the things that I think would be good here is to learn scope. Um, there was a, a talk that I really liked, um, and the a GDC talk, and the developer kind of said, gave the example of, like, you know, it's open heart surgery. You can't know how long open heart surgery will take. You can't know how long, you know, dot, dot, dot will take. Um, and it was sort of an indicator that like, yes, it is difficult to come up with estimates for how long it takes to do certain things, but there are many very complicated professions in the world in which there is an expectation that you, you know, you'll have some sort of estimate in terms of how long the work is, is going to take. And that basically the idea here is not that you get it right all the time. It's that you actually go through the process of trying to figure out how long it's going to take you to do a thing. And through getting that practice, you will become better at making those, um, uh, you know, at, at uh, fixing those, or not fixing, at, um, at making those kinds of estimates. So, you know, again, I don't, all this stuff is going to be for fun, right? It's not like I, I need to sit down and figure out, you know, what my burn rate is or anything like that. Um, but I do think it would be good to to get some discipline for this stuff, right? Especially because if I say it's like, hey, you know what? I had a lot of fun doing this last year. Uh, maybe this time I want to try, you know, and, you know, fill in the blank, right? Maybe I don't want to slavishly follow the Vanilla tutorial, maybe at this point, I want to try and implement, you know, maybe, maybe I want to say, okay, if we had to rewrite this tutorial, what are some of the things that I would do? What are the things that confused or what are the things that I think could be done better? Um, and um, yeah, I mean, obviously um, that still has a finite period of time. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's eating my spinach. It's, it's good for me. Um, but it, it would be also kind of nice too. The reason why I want to give myself some extra time is just, it, it would be fun to just implement a couple of things which are just showing off, right? You know, hey, here's a clever idea I had. That's in a game now, you know, be amazed or have, you know, maybe this will make you play the game four minutes longer or something like that. Anyways, uh, I'm really drawing this. I think it's been 15 minutes of me yapping. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next week for the last official parts of the tutorial.